Happy Mother's Day. Welcome to Joy, and happy Mother's Day to you. Today I would like to <clears throat> talk about honoring our mothers from Proverbs chapter number 31. Again, as uh, Brother Stephen said, there are gifts out there in the foyer on the way out. Uh, please take one, mothers. Um, we do want to acknowledge and recognize you for all the work that you do and all the uh, passion that you put into raising your children, or currently are. <laughs> you know. So in Proverbs chapter 31, honoring a mother, 31 talks about, and it starts out, chapter 31 talks about stating that this is the mother of the author, all right? So it very much applies to a Mother's Day situation. The virtuous mother, the virtuous woman, is listed here and is defined in the Bible. And uh, the biblically defined virtuous woman is a rare thing in any age. All right? It is rare. The norm is a distorted, twisted, self-indulgent version. And unfortunately, it's kind of to be expected, given that we all have a sinful nature, a selfish nature, and that, you know, we are all fallen from the truth, and that the world, which is ruled by, led by the way of the world, is actually the way of the devil. The Bible makes that very clear, and as you look at the headlines, you look at the news, you look at what's going on around the world for all of the ages, you understand that that's very much true. But today, homes and marriages and children uh, are built often more on convenience rather than on, on a godly uh, foundation, the godliness that, that is supposed to be in the home. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not uncommon for selfishness and wickedness to be glorified and modeled in the home, not just by mothers, but by fathers as well. And... Uh, you know, there, there has never, ever been a perfect mother. Well, it just doesn't happen because all mothers are human. There's only ever been one perfect father, and he's not human, okay? The Father in heaven. We are all flawed. <clears throat> we need to understand that. And we need to understand that we need to set our own bar very high in following the Lord Jesus Christ and in being what we ought to be but we also need to understand that many people around us do not have the truth. They do not understand. They haven't been had a good home life modeled before them. They have a way to go. But even among church members, there is a, an appalling lack of godly restraint, an unwillingness to submit to God and the way He says we're supposed to live and work and love and, and raise our children, those kind of things. Many of those homes, they call themselves Christians, but they're empty of love. They're empty of kindness and of, of giving real compassion and mercy, forgiveness. Led by people without a servant's heart. You cannot be mimicking the heart of God and the life of Jesus Christ if you don't have a servant's heart. If you do not have a concern for God's ways even here on the earth. It doesn't matter what society thinks, it matters what God thinks when it comes to our behavior before God. Too many people, men and women, mothers, fathers, they, their identity is wrapped up in something they accomplish, in a career, in an education, in a, in a great uh, athletic ability or some great success that way. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's in the expensive toys that they can afford, whatever that is, you know. But as mothers and fathers, that should not be our identity. Praise the Lord if you're successful in all those things. There's nothing wrong with being successful in all those things. But it should not be your identity. <clears throat> First, as a child of God, and secondly, as a mother or a father in the home. Those things should take precedence. 
Now, whether or not you had godly examples in the home does not relieve you of your responsibility to be what God has called you to be, has given you His Holy Spirit to empower you to be as a child of God. Titus 2 describes that responsibility like this. Concerning mothers, it says, the aged women likewise that they be in behavior as becoming, becometh holiness, sanctification before God. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober or serious, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. In Titus it says that the virtuous woman, and I will apply this also because there's a passage adjacent about men, that we have a responsibility not only to our own family, but to teach the next generation. And uh, one of the problems that we have is we fail Now, we should not glorify any sin in our lives. We should not glorify behavior that is uh, contrary to God's will. But we also need to understand we're not perfect, and our children need to understand that sometimes we make mistakes. It's not on purpose. I mean, it's a mistake. But we can't go back and change those things. We can't fix those things. There's not a word that passed out of your lips that you can take back. It's not an action or an inaction that has hurt somebody that you can actually undo. But you can work on making up for that, building something new, fixing the relationships and those things. But also, after you've gone through these things, without trying to micromanage somebody else's life, mothers and fathers alike, but mothers, it says, you need to be able to pass on to the next generation. And part of what you're going to pass on is... I screwed this up. And I would really like to see you not have to go through what I'm having to go through. Here's what God would have me to do. And if I could go back and redo it, I would. But you know what? I can't. You have an opportunity to do it. Teach them. I was blessed with a great mother. And my sons have a wonderful, amazing mother. It's just that's a true blessing from heaven. And it really does make a difference. For so many raised without that. They're out of whack. Their norm is askew. They've never known love and security. They've never known a lot of those things. But as children of God, as believers, part of the same body, the church, we should be able to help them understand. It's really hard to see God as a loving God if you grew up in a hateful situation. But He's still a loving God. So we need to share. We need to engage people in their lives and and be that blessing. Today there is a lot of talk about privilege and advantage and all of those things, and rightly so. I won't take away from that. I believe I was blessed beyond belief. I had privilege, not money. We didn't have money, but I had privilege of being a safe home, a loving home, you know, the stability of my, both my parents there and loving one another. The, the problem with it is The answer put forth for almost all of this privilege and stuff today is wealth. And wealth's not the answer. Scripture actually says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So what makes you think more money is going to fix the problem? No. Parents, if you want to give your children a true advantage in the most important things in life. It's not about money. It's not about expensive toys. It's not about having all the latest of everything. 
It's about raising them up with love, honor, commitment, stability of mind, emotion, spirit, and self-discipline. Being able to say no to the world and the devil and to our own sinful self. These things, I mean, we bring our children to church. Some of us are blessed enough to send our children to Christian schools, things like that. And I think those are wonderful opportunities, and, and that's the way I would have it. I mean, I was raised in a public school. I know what goes on. We were blessed that way, but not everybody has that. But these characteristics of God that we're talking about in this environment for, for a genuine, righteous, holy raising up of children. You know, that's all best taught in the home. You bring your children to church for a couple of hours a week, and they get some fun, and they get some scripture, and they get some good teaching, and that is really good. And the Bible says it's even necessary, but what they see modeled at home, they see for multiplied hours every week in comparison to what they get in church. In the home where a father loves, where fathers love their wives above all others and encourage her in her endeavor to become this virtuous woman that the Bible describes. And where wives respect their husbands and encourage his efforts to become all that he can be the godly man that God has empowered him as a believer to be and commanded in the Scripture for each of us to be. It is very important to set that environment correctly, to make it possible, to be safe enough, to be loving enough, to be forgiving enough, to all of those things that we can all grow in and model before our children a godly example. In Proverbs 31.10, it says, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Father, as we come before you today, we pray, Lord, for clear hearts and minds. And understanding that, Lord, mothers are due honor. It is a tough job. They're all to be virtuous mothers and women. Lord, many struggle so much. Many are alone. Many are in relationships that are, make it doubly hard. But Lord, with you, all things are possible. Lord, that was the theme of our music today. The things that seem impossible... They may be to us, but not to you. May our hearts, our lives, our minds be dedicated to you so much so that we begin to see the impossible in each of our lives, in each of our homes, and carried on into the generations to follow. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <clears throat> to begin with, we should honor our mothers. The scripture teaches that. In Luke 18, 20, he says, thou knowest the commandments, the Old Testament commandments. He says, honor thy father and thy mother. Period. No excuses. Do it. Now I want you to notice that it does not say only if your mother was and your father were exceptional. Now, some of you say, my parents didn't deserve honor. Well, it's possible that their behavior did not, but you need to respect the fact that God chose them to bring you into this world and to raise you. I honestly believe, I am, I, and I believe I'm right, that God will respect you know, the person, the mother of a person, is that person that, that dedicated their life to you growing up knowing the things of the Lord and taking care of your needs and being there in the tough times, the hard times. Some of you were raised by people who weren't your biological mother, grandmothers, aunts, you know, other people in your lives. 
Um, and, but that, that position of being there for you, when you're the one making everything dirty, when you're throwing up in the middle of the night and somebody's sitting there with you, that's most of the time, that's mom, you know, taking care of all the problems. And when there's scrapes and bruises or when, you know, you're crushed by something in your life emotionally, you run to mom and she's the one that, that gives you comfort and says, it's going to be okay. We can get through this. I'm here for you. You know, those are, those are wonderful things, and that needs to be honored. Even the position deserves honor. Even if she wasn't the best, if she was there, maybe it was her best. Just respect that. Give due honor. You don't have to tell her she was the best or tell everybody she was the best if she wasn't. I don't mean that, but respect it, honor it. In Mark 7.10, says, cursed, anyone who curses the mother says, let him die the death. That's Old Testament as well. I want you to see, God takes this honoring a mother and father seriously. And in our society and in a lot of societies down through the years and Culturally, there is a disdain for mothers and fathers in the traditional sense, in the scriptural sense. And that ought not to be so. And God saw that coming and he says, look, understand, you're not going to be blessed if you curse your parents. In Deuteronomy 27, 16, it says, Cursed be he that setteth light by. What's that mean? Cursed be the one that dishonors, disrespects his father or mother. I mean, this is God-inspired Scripture. Yeah, don't make fun of them. I mean, we have just, and we have different relationships within our, within our homes, but what we do need to understand is, God says it's a position of respect. It deserves honor. Especially those that that really poured their life into it. They were always there for you. Really important. In 2011, big conference, David Platt said, our goal in parenting is not ultimately for our kids to get a great education, to be great athletes, or to find a great husband or wife, or get a great career. It is, our goal is for them to love a great God. Sometimes we set our aim on the wrong target. And we think that manipulating someone's life into a certain place is going to be the best thing for them. The truth is, God knows what's best for them. And if we can get them to love God and trust God, He's going to take them down the right road. We can still make mistakes, all right? If we look down through... Uh, this passage of Scripture in Proverbs 31. We see the characteristics of the virtuous woman. I don't want to go through all the verses. It would take us too long today, but I encourage you, if you haven't read it lately, read it again. And you will find a lot of these things, these attributes, that, uh, that the characteristics of a virtuous mother. First, in 11 and 12, it says that she has a loving commitment to her husband. Her husband is able to trust in her all his life. That is a very huge <laughs> aspect of marriage. And you say, wait a minute, this is about a mother, right? Yes, but what you're teaching your children by the way you treat your husband is really going to affect all of their relationships down through life. She needs to be beneficial. She needs to be dependable for her family. And that means a lot of different things, okay? One thing about humans is we're all different. Our intellect, our education, our abilities, our physical abilities, you know. Uh, and for mothers, every child you have is unique. So every situation is unique. So we're not looking for some, you know, cookie cutter kind of a thing. What we're looking for are attributes in the mother 
that stand out and that are positive for her whole family and for her children. And the first is that loving commitment to her husband. Secondly, in, in 13 to 15, it says she's not given to idleness. You know, we're talking about things here, <coughs> excuse me, uh, that in a lot of generations past, it wasn't an option because everything was physical labor. But today, it's real easy to put that off on someone else. Also, with the wealth that we have here in the West, a lot of the duties that, that were taken care of by others are paid, you know, we pay other people to do. But he says, in this, there is a determination, you know, to take care of the needs for her family. I mean, that diligently seeking out whatever resources we need. And the resources, again, they're unique to every family. And what, what is up to the, the mother, you know, it's different in every family. But she, and the truth is, she willingly works at and even goes to great lengths to provide for her family that environment of growth, that environment where they are able to not only be safe and secure, but be loved and understand when they mess up, there's forgiveness, there's long-suffering mercy. All these attributes of God mostly are learned in your relationships at home. That's why so many people's perspective on God is so skewed. She serves her family without complaint. Your family's not a burden, even though we are. Okay? We're not supposed to complain about it, but we all, at times, are a burden, especially to mothers and wives. <coughs> But it's not a place to complain about and say, oh, I wish you were never here. I wish everything was different. Be thankful for what you have. In 16, it talks about knowledgeable and wise. You know, you can't be knowledgeable about things without learning about them. You know, many, um, Again, we're all unique, but many times the intellect, the opportunity for knowledge and understanding is very, very high in some people. Not everybody's the same. So whatever a woman, a mother, fathers also, but whatever a mother is capable of learning, man, you should be able to learn that. The trick is the wisdom to apply it to help her family. Again, what ways? God knows. But with the knowledge and with wisdom, she can, she's able to consider all the options and invest wisely in that. This, the uh, example in Proverbs 31 is she sees a piece of property that could be very profitable, and she's able to go buy it. Okay, I mean, so we're not talking about, okay, just can you sow or can you do something else? We're talking about a lot of variety in life. Now, how do you go buy something if you don't have the resources for it? Well, down lower, you know, she's industrious. But the thing here is, we're not trying to pigeonhole anybody into one place. We're saying, if God has gifted you with the ability to learn, learn! Just make sure you use it for the glory of God and for the benefit of your family. You do your, no fa your family no good if you use it all out there for your own good and don't bring it home to your, pe to your family, your people at home. Knowledgeable and wise. Investing her time, her energy, her talents for what? The blessing of her family. What made it motivates you to achieve whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Are they selfish goals? Or are they for the glory of God, for the benefit of those in your family? Mothers, and part of that is for your children. In 17 to 19, there's a dedication there that is obvious. She keeps herself healthy and productive and active and strong. That's not a quote from there, but that's what it's talking about able to, to do what needs to be done. 
And what is that? I don't know. You do. She understands how important it is to never give up, especially never quit on your family. Never quit on your kids. There are things that we can't come back from in, in society, in our lives. But you know what? A mother that loves her kids and a father as well, they're not going to give up on those kids. Now, there are times where you have to say, I can't enable your sin. I can't enable your self-destruction, but I'm going to be here for you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to love you. And if you'll talk to me, I'll talk to you. I'll listen to your problems. I'll, I'll give you the best advice I can give you. I'll take you to the Lord, you know, but I'm not going to quit. There's nothing you can do that would make me not want to be your mother, you know, that attitude. Verse 20, it talks about being charitable, unselfish, giving, and merciful. Now, if you recognize some of these attributes already, every single one of these is actually an attribute of the Lord Jesus Christ and our nurturing Heavenly Father. We're not trying to tell you you need to be something nobody else has ever been. We're trying to teach you that God says the best thing you can be is in my image, my, the image of my son, Jesus Christ. And that's true for both men and women. This passage happens to be focused on women. <clears throat> it says, look, you need to have these characteristics. How is your, gonna, is your home going to be a haven for your children to get to know God, to feel loved, and to feel you know, nurtured, and to learn right from wrong, and all of these things, if there's no mercy, if every time there's a failure, there's this heavy-handed approach, is there, I'm never going to let you live this down kind of an attitude. That's not what the home is supposed to be. And that's who this virtuous mother is. In 21 to 24, it talks about genuinely guarding the honor of her family. Now, honor has taken on a lot of meanings down through the years, okay? And a lot of things that are called honor in societies from, you know, the time of nobles and serfs to today are not honorable. What we're talking about is those things that bring honor and glory to God and help improve people's chances for reaching God, whether they be in the home or whether they be out in the world so it, she has this attitude, the virtuous mother, that says, you know what, close enough is not good enough. Not for my family. You know? Now what are we talking about? Again, you can tell from what I've been saying, I don't believe that's money and those kind of things. It's the investment in our children's lives. That's what matters. Her behavior, whether publicly or in the home, you know, is, is honorable. It's, it's holy before everybody. She, it says, sees that her husband appears well and honorably before all. <clears throat> you know, today, that's not like making the right clothes for him and things like that. But you know what? Sometimes we as men, I hate to say it, but we need guidance in the way we behave. You know, now, she's not to rule over her husband, but you know what? We need reminded that's not very compassionate. Have you thought about this? Do you know that they've gone through this and you need to approach this differently? You know, that'll change the way a man behaves in public. Therefore, it's going to change his honorableness, is that a word, in front of everybody. Because sometimes you get all wrapped up in emotion, especially young husbands get wrapped up in the, you know, the adrenaline and the testosterone and whatever, and, and the, the world, the, the place you work in sometimes is very coarse and harsh and, and sometimes hateful, very cutting, of the way people you know, deal with one another. But a, a wife that loves her husband can say, you know, I... I, I heard you say this, and I saw you act this way, and, and 
I just want you to know that if I was there, I'd be really offended, or I would be really hurt, or I would think you hated me. You know, and just help them to see and to understand. You say, she's supposed to mother her husband? No, but she's supposed to be that help me. There are things that a husband needs to do for his wife, too. But it's, it's an important part, because if, let's say, you work in a, in a situation that's harsh environment, you know, the way people deal with one another, and out there in the world, there's a lot of that. And I spent 20 years in, in the secular world before I went full-time in ministry. I know what's out there, and I know what you deal with every single day. But if you bring that home to your children, what are you teaching them? That that's right, and it's not no matter where you're at. You have to be strong and be able to stand in it, but you also have to be able to, to get through it. And a, and a wife can really help a husband with that. You're better than that. You know, pray about it. She is industrious. She finds a way. That's the thing. She finds the way. Why? Because a virtuous mother, a virtuous woman cares. She wants, she wants that for her family. In 25 to 29, basically it says she has a character that is recognizably good to everyone she encounters. She's known for her strength and honor. She's not known for the clothes she wears. Her speech is wise and kind. She's not known for being lazy, idleness. Her children bless her. It says they speak of her as honest, good, and happy. Now, how are they going to speak that way if the home is not that way? And I know it's a lot. But God has made it possible for you, woman, to be this virtuous mother, be this virtuous woman, and he's given you a Holy Spirit that will give you the power to do it. You know, our theme for the music today was, you know, what's impossible for men is possible with God. And it, the things that, you know, the Scripture may say to you in your heart and in your mind, Mother, is, is that's impossible, that's not who I am. Are you a believer in Jesus Christ? then you have the greatest power there has ever been in the Holy Spirit dwelling within you to empower you to be this person. So it really means when you stand before God, there'll be no excuse. Husbands, you have the same thing, different set of, of uh, identity here, if you will, but it says, look, it is possible. It's not only possible, if God says, this is what I want from you, then he can make it happen if you submit to him, if you surrender to him and say, I want to do this. Your job's not to be your children's best friend. It's great when we can have that relationship, but there are times where you have to be the disciplinarian, where you have to set the rules, when you have to, to give the guidelines, and, and then also when you have to be the one to pick up all the pieces, emotionally and physically. And I know that, that's, that's why... Motherhood needs to be honored. It's a huge job. And if you're not the one doing it, like anything else, you don't recognize just how big of a thing it is. Recognize her character, you know. It says her husband praises her and gives her glory. And she strives to be the best mother and wife that she can be. You get down to verses 30 and 31, it says that she has a beautiful faith. I love that. A beautiful faith. Her awe and reverence of the Lord, they're praiseworthy. When things are going wrong, she's turning to the Lord and lifting Him up and seeking guidance. When things are going good, she's turning to the Lord and lifting up His name and seeking for guidance, you know. Her relationship to God is what empowers this virtuous woman. You can't overstate that. How can you have the attributes of God? How can you have the attributes of Jesus Christ if you don't have a relationship with Him? If you're not reading His Word, if you're not living it out, if you're not following what He says to do? 
Jesus was no weakling. Jesus didn't go out and start fights. But Jesus didn't have to fear anything because the power of God was in him. He is God, okay? And we need to have that. He didn't have to be praised for every little thing. He did what was right. He didn't have to be encouraged to do what was right. It was in his nature. He didn't have to... I mean, he could have so many times taken all the glory and he said, I'm just doing what the Father has told me to do. He gave all the glory to his Father in heaven. When people hated him, instead of judging them, he could have spoken a word and they would have just disappeared. But instead, his behavior was to be a guide for our behavior. How do you treat the bully? How do you treat the person that hates you? How do you treat the person that's speaking lies about you? You know, all of those things. And if we're doing that in the home, and the mother has a huge role in this, how do I behave when the gossip's going around? How do I respond when people are nitpicking every little thing that I do? How am I going to respond when they begin to pick on my kids? You know, that's the worst thing for a mother, isn't it? We have to model that before them so that they know not only how to handle the problem, but how to do it when they have their own children. Her awe and reverence of the Lord. Her attitudes, her actions, they just give praise to her and her relationship to God because her attitude and actions just point people to the Lord. Now, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I'm, I'm human. And sometimes I fail and I fall, but the one you really need to have your eyes on is our Father in heaven. You know, our children need that. Our children all get to choose for themselves. But if we can give them a foundation of hope and joy and love and mercy and all of those things, it is much more likely that as they try to figure out their faith for themselves and not just use the faith of their parents, that they'll have a solid foundation and when the world tells them this lie and then it comes to light, they'll, they'll know right where to go back to. And it will happen. The world, the devil, trying to deceive them, trying to lead them astray every moment of every day. All of these characteristics depend on that submission to the Lord Jesus Christ. Husbands, it is your responsibility to thank and to bless your wife. To cultivate the growth of your wife. Now, this is not, you know, thumb on her head kind of, kind of thing. This is creating the environment and encouraging the right behaviors so that she can become the virtuous woman that she's supposed to be, that God says she's supposed to be. If she is constantly fighting with you, it's really hard to surrender to the Lord. If she is constantly having to battle over what's what in the home, it's really hard to dedicate yourself to the things of the Lord. So it's a husband's responsibility as a spiritual leader of the home to make sure that that environment is one of encouragement, one of hope, one of love, one of forgiveness, all of these attributes of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're not just for mothers, they're for every believer. And this passage is saying, when these show up in the mother's life, the children and the husband are truly blessed, but that's true in all of our lives. If we'll live and act in the holiness of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we will trust Him completely and follow what He says to do, then will everyone around us will be better for it. They won't hate to be around us because it'll be a safe place to be. Now, that does not mean we enable sin and we you know, allow all that stuff. I'm not talking about that. What we're saying is we're a benefit. Our relationship to God is a benefit. But I want to say again, why, women, even if your husband does not encourage or cultivate your growth, you still need to strive for completeness in the Lord Jesus Christ, complete growth, the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, 
He can give you that heart of victory. He can give you that power to overcome. You know, the scripture even talks about a, a Christian woman who is living for the Lord. Even her life can turn the heart of an unbelieving husband. Bring him to Christ because she is everything that he's, she's supposed to be. And that means everything he really needs, she is. Everything the children need, she is. And, you know, and when he begins to recognize what is it about her that makes her this way, God's getting all the glory, so he's saying it must be the change that God made in her. Finally, sons and daughters, we are to show honor and gratitude to our mothers. And I don't believe that's supposed to stop as long as she's alive, right? She is the one that dedicated most of her life sometimes to caring for and to teaching you to live a godly life. Those mothers who, who teach righteousness, who have modeled the attributes of the Lord Jesus Christ, they deserve a great honor, a great honor. And maybe you grew up in a home where the mother or the father, but in this case the mother, where the mother was not honorable, she was not holy, she did not have the right attributes. There is probably someone in your life. You honor, respect the fact that God had her to be your mother, but there's probably somebody else, if you're in here today, that played an active role in who you have become. You know, you could show honor to that mother as well. Let them know that the power of the love and the grace and the, the guidance and all of those things, the shoulder to cry on, whatever it was that she was, go ahead and you know, share that. It's not disrespectful to your mother to share with other people that have become, taken up that role in your life. Let them know, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for your input into my life. And I want to thank you for that. And I praise God for it. And I pray for you in that respect. Far above rubies. Honoring our, our mothers. And for husbands, honoring the mother of your children as well. Encouraging her. Helping her find that, that way. Now each of us falls short. There's always something we can work on in getting closer to the Lord, living more like Him. We can't go back and undo the things we've done with our children, but we can pass on a better way of doing it. We can help our children to understand, I really wish I had done this, you know, and if you need assistance, I'll help you do this with the grandchildren, things like that. Or maybe a spiritual daughter in the church. Don't try to be the mother. Don't try to micromanage their life, but you can be there with great help, encouragement. Be the blessing that God's wanted you to be. Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, we pray that you would be lifted up in every way. Lord, that in our lives, in our words,